Thank you once again for joining us for this Friday's edition of Alaska Weather on this 20th day of July 2018. On the fire danger map, uh, got some areas of extreme fire danger uh, continuing up here in the Yukon Flats area around the Yukon Porcupine River areas and then off to the west a little bit. Another uh, zone here from central Tanana Valley, Greater Fairbanks area, back toward Tanana and then down along the northwest side of the Alaska Range and the Susitna Valley fire danger gradually increasing is now in the high category in uh, some areas of the Susitna Valley and also in the Copper River Basin we've got a developing area of high fire danger there with, that uh, may increase here over the weekend especially if some winds kick in. So from there moving on to satellite imagery there are no warnings, watches or advisories uh, for weather or any of the rivers or streams out for the state today and probably through tomorrow as well. Not any strong systems really affecting the area as well. We've got this weak front here pushing slowly eastward in toward the Pribilof Islands, extending down, uh, bringing some light precipitation in and around Nikolsky. Uh, wind, narrow band of some breezy conditions uh, associated with that. For example, St. George seeing winds gusting to 28 miles per hour. Otherwise, back to the west, uh, really not a lot going on. Uh, looks like a developing cloud mass there toward uh, or just west of ADAC and southward. Uh, break here along the Alaska Peninsula as far as precipitation goes. There's still a lot of clouds in through the Bering Sea that this imagery doesn't really pick up on. Just the higher stuff here, more enhanced areas are the higher top colder clouds uh, depicted better. And there is a narrow band of moisture sliding on up uh, into Bristol Bay and that uh, not bringing a whole lot of moisture with it but along the Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula rainfall amounts uh, pretty light uh, like a hundredth of an inch from this front at Unalaska otherwise uh, Chignik had six hundredths of an inch in the 12 hour period at 3 p.m. this afternoon while Nome farther to the north there was some moisture in through here picked up eight hundredths of an inch and then with this boundary up there to the north mostly clouds but some light rain uh, back toward the western Arctic coast, light rain, fog, drizzle type of conditions there. Some of that getting into no attack with about, uh, oh, let's see, they picked about two hundredths of an inch here during the day today. Otherwise, just clouds off to the east, uh, isolated showers around Eagle, mostly all that moisture east of the border here. Sunshine from the central interior southward, uh, clouds burning off. Uh, Cook Inlet, Northern Cook Inlet, low clouds gradually burning off in the Susitna Valley today, so temperatures starting to approach 70 at mid-afternoon. Otherwise, uh, 70s pushing up toward 80, especially in the Copper River Basin. And again, Farewell and Stony at 3 p.m. both had 80 degrees. A lot of low clouds in the Gulf of Alaska right up to the southeast coast. Otherwise, uh, mostly sunny over the inland areas of the Panhandle. And again, the Bering Sea all the way up to the uh, Bearing straight there, socked in with low clouds and areas of fog. And for tonight, uh, this uh, moisture feed will continue. Uh, weak moisture feed, nothing heavy, but that's going to keep it uh, damp along the Alaska Peninsula, especially for Sandpoint, Chignik, over, to Yutarni, over toward Yatarni Bay, and uh, even some drizzle possible here getting up to uh, east side of Kodiak Island there with that uh, weak southeast flow. And basically ridging here, both at the surface and aloft, to make for very light wind conditions. So look for the low clouds to increase once again and push northward, probably into the Sitna Valley like they did today, maybe not as extensive. Same thing for Prince William Sound, uh, low clouds developing and spreading or increasing throughout the night. And along the southeast coast here, pushing into the inside waters there in some areas with uh, drizzle along the outer coastline. Light rain, fog, drizzle, very light up there along the western Arctic coast, uh, becoming more showery and over the north slope as you head east. And this uh, frontal boundary still has a, it's very weak, 
and just a narrow band of possible moisture there from, again, it's not really moving too far to the east there, but from uh, eastern Aleutians back up near the Pervolos with the frontal boundary and still staying to the west and uh, showery conditions falling in behind. Outlook for us uh, tomorrow here, chance of uh, showers all along the southwest coast here, especially out toward the coastline where it could be drizzle with fog that will extend right down into the Alaska Peninsula to just uh, probably Sitkanak Island, not really affecting Kodiak all that much. Look for a possible afternoon clearing there, especially on the east side of Kodiak, hopefully. And then this uh, front continues to weaken, still have a chance of rain there for the eastern Aleutians, maybe the Pervolofs. Uh, wind not a factor at all anywhere in the state tomorrow uh, with high pressure from the Gulf extending right in over the interior. So it'll be mostly sunny temperatures in the 70s to uh, lower, possibly mid 80s here over the interior with uh, starting to lose the cloudiness a little bit here. Not so much for tomorrow, but uh, Sunday up to the north there and should become mostly sunny, possibly staying cloudy along the outer coastline of the Panhandle. Look for the low clouds to burn off Cook Inlet for mostly sunny skies, 60s, lower 70s for the highs, Kenai Peninsula and burning off the low clouds of Prince William Sound as well. Again, tomorrow highs possibly in the lower 80s for the Copper River Basin. Isolated showers of risk of there for the central western Alaska range. And then for Sunday, just variably cloudy, increasing clearing up here. So temperatures, say, for the Tanah Valley approaching the mid-80s for the highs and over to the eastern interior. Again, 70s to Sitna Valley, possibly in the lower 80s, Copper River Basin and partly mostly sunny here in northern Cuscombe Valley, maybe to the Seward Peninsula in the afternoon, but lots of low clouds with areas of uh, light moisture here in the form of drizzle fog or maybe even some light rain anywhere in the green shaded areas here. And that covers much of the Bering Sea all the way down here to the, the Aleutians, very weak troughs uh, in some westerly, west southwesterly flow here will kind of enhance that condition with a very weak low there just south of the Alaska Peninsula. That'll continue that southerly flow with a chance of light rain, fog and drizzle there for the Alaska Peninsula. And again, that pushing into Kodiak Island. Lows for tonight, uh, 55 to 60 around the Cuscombe Valley to near 50 out along the southwest coast. Mid to upper 40s, Aleutians, Bering Sea. Mid 40s, St. Lawrence Island. Upper 30s, central eastern Arctic coast right out along the coastline, milder over the north slope. And lower 50s, northeast interior. 40 to 50 for the Copper River Basin, lower to mid 50s South Central Alaska and the Panhandle. Highs tomorrow, well into the 70s here for the Southeast Coast. Very nice day coming up there with the uh, lower clouds there, depending on when they burn off, will depend on how high your temperatures get. Upper 70s to lower, possibly mid 80s in the Tanana Valley, uh, but even warmer on Sunday. Temperatures up into the mid to upper 70s for the Susitna Valley, again, depending on how soon that low cloud deck burns off. And we've got 70s, looks like all the way out toward the Seward Peninsula. Lows for Sunday morning, upper 50s here in the west and mid 50s up to the northeast there. Staying in the 50s even over the north slope and mid 50s for the Panhandle, 40s out over the Bering Sea and the Aleutians. And highs on Sunday, mid 80s here for the central Tanana Valley. Lower to mid 80s there for the upper Yukon Valley areas and even toward the eastern border there. Looking pretty warm with temperatures lower to mid 80s. 75 to 80 for the southeast coast. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First uh, flying weather graphic here, uh, starting Saturday out, Saturday morning. IFR, same scenario we've seen out here over the Bering Sea. All of the Aleutians, south side of the Alaska Peninsula across Kodiak Island and eastward there. Uh, actually, as far north as Southern Cook Inlet, uh, Kamishak Bay, maybe even Kachemak Bay, eastward to along the central southeast coast, staying VFR with the inland areas. And then for the afternoon, lots of VFR here, north slope, western Arctic coast, all the way down, becoming VFR in Prince William Sound, as well as Cook Inlet, although uh, slowly, especially south of the Foreland, it's going to be slow going as far as the clearing goes, and probably not, will ha it probably won't happen at all uh, over the uh, Barren Islands, Kodiak, uh, looks IFR. Panhandle, though, this area of Marsville VFR kind of pulls back off the coast. No change out west and no change out west for Sunday morning as well with IFR. VFR over the interior, Marsville VFR right along the North Gulf Coast, Kenai Peninsula, Cook Inlet, uh, maybe the uh, Susitna Valley, otherwise IFR possible over the Southwest Mountains. Marsville VFR presses back up to the Southeast Coast. And looking at Sunday afternoon, 
Marsville VFR right along the outer coastline of the Panhandle, otherwise VFR. Another good VFR day here for uh, interior Alaska and possible Marsville VFR along areas of the Arctic coast with IFR, Point Hope, Cape Lisbon, Bering Strait, definitely St. Lawrence Island, and still just about all of the Bering Sea and the Aleutians in the IFR forecast zone, as well as the east side of Kodiak Island, Marsville VFR, Bristol Bay, um, up into the uh, southwest interior a little bit here in the Yukon Delta, Yukon Kuskokwim Delta. Moving on to the passes for Anatovic, looks like a good day tomorrow, the entire day, VFR flying, seeing these visibilities probably unlimited as well for Adigan. And for Lake Clark and Merrill with the uh, marine layer, low cloud deck, uh, possible fog, we start out marginal on the eastern entrances, otherwise they'll become VFR, otherwise the pass itself will be VFR. Rainy, VFR, and for Windy, same forecast, good VFR with, uh, again, ceilings visibility is unlimited for Isabel and Mentasta with uh, Portage, or I'm sorry, Tanita, good VFR as well. Now for Portage, starting out IFR, again with the uh, low stratus deck, possible fog, and then that'll gradually become VFR, hopefully throughout the afternoon. And then Chilkoot and White, looks like pretty good VFR. For the freezing levels, pretty warm air aloft here, Gulf of Alaska, 12,000 feet into southern Alaska, and actually really warm air aloft all the way up uh, into, across the Chuck CC, falling back a little bit, not too bad, a little cooler, 68,000 feet up there in the northeast. Real slack thermal gradient here across much of the forecast area. Picks up a little bit out here, 10 to 14,000 feet across the western Aleutians. And for icing, none significant expected anywhere in the state, so none in the forecast here on this graphic and for the jet stream strong upper level ridge here centered right over the gulf of alaska extending up from another center down to the south but that uh keeping the jet stream obviously a uh, week here and coming up and over the ridge maybe about 90 knots here dropping down along and just east of the panhandle it's going to keep it dry there for sure with uh no more than 60 knots though and looking at 9,000 feet, southeast winds 25 to 30 at this elevation, Alaska Peninsula, southwest Kodiak Island, Bristol Bay, up to 35 knots there for Nunavak Island, about 25 St. Lawrence Island through the Bering Strait, turning southwest 25 to 30, westerlies 25, 20, 20 to 25 along the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, and then under the ridge axis, really light and variable here from about the Tanana Valley all the way down to the Gulf of Alaska, just five knots. Light northwest breeze, five, maybe 10 knots for the panhandle out west, uh, 25 knots coming into the far western Aleutian associated with this system. Otherwise, uh, 10 to 15 knots. 3,000 feet, about the same pattern, a little different on the wind speeds. 35, still a narrow band of some pretty brisk winds here, 30 to 35 knots along the coast, turning south and then west, maybe up to 30 knots on the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. Otherwise, pretty light and variable here into the Gulf of Alaska, southern Alaska, light northwest, 5 to 15 for the Panhandle. Turbulence, occasional moderate chop, or I'm sorry, light to isolated moderate chop, Alaska Peninsula, Bristol Bay, right up into the Bering Strait, western Arctic coast, and even possibly on the east side. And after the break, I'll be back with the marine forecasts. Dual polarization technology is a major upgrade to the current radar system. It allows forecasters a better idea of what's actually out there and can help keep you safe. Current radar technology uh, transmits and receives information in the horizontal direction, which is very limited. Dual polarization technology, in addition to the horizontal, transmits and receives uh, vertical energy, which allows forecasters to get information about the size, shape, and phase of the precipitation. We can use that information to better determine the precipitation type to expect at your given location. There you have it. This new technology is currently being installed in radars across the country and is already being used by National Weather Service forecasters to produce better, more accurate forecasts. Learn more here and follow us.
Want to know about the future of weather radar? Well, the National Severe Storms Lab has it here with its new phased array radar. Let's check it out. It's a non-moving radar. It has four faces of the antenna, each pointing in different directions. One of the big advantages is that we're seeing so far, it can sample the, the area around the radar in less than a minute, maybe even a half a minute. And this is five, six times faster than what they can do today. NSSL is leading the development of future weather radar with this project. Learn more here and follow us. The Storm Prediction Center is one of the NOAA weather partners. They are located in the National Weather Center in Norman, Oklahoma. Greg Carbon gives us a glimpse into what the SPC does. Our mission is to analyze and forecast severe thunderstorms and the potential for tornadoes, large hail, and damaging winds from those thunderstorms across the lower 48 states, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. One of the primary missions of the Storm Prediction Center is the issuance of severe thunderstorm and tornado watches across the country when conditions appear to be coming together to support the development of severe thunderstorms and tornadoes. The world-class meteorologists in the Storm Prediction Center specialize in severe weather and keeping you safe. Learn more here and follow us. The National Severe Storms Lab is working on increasing the lead time for severe weather warnings. The national average for tornado warnings is currently 13 minutes, but more notice would be helpful, especially for those in charge of moving large groups to shelter. Warn on Forecast will help forecasters issue hazardous weather warnings earlier. The project will give them more info about the chances of strong winds, large hail, and even tornadoes. Currently, warnings are created by forecasters looking at the atmosphere outside, understanding its volatility, and then comparing that to how they see the Doppler radar presenting what's going on inside thunderstorms. One on forecast is an idea where we're going to take the massive amounts of satellite, radar, and surface data and stick them all into a very high resolution prediction model. And then by producing new forecasts every 15 or 20 minutes, the forecasters hopefully will be able to use that model to produce warnings that extend out to an hour. Before the National Weather Service can use this tool, it must be developed and tested. One big challenge will be deciding how to get the model predictions to the forecasters. I'm going to keep this one very low, I'm just adjusting the track. These hazardous weather prediction models are going to produce a huge amount of output. And this fire hose of data is just too much for forecasters to handle in real time quickly. So in order to help deal with that, NSSL has developed a related project called FACETS. And FACETS is the methodology which will enable forecasters to focus very quickly on the most important threats. Once worn on forecast and FACETS are proven to be reliable and effective, then forecasters will be better able to inform you of threats nearby. Learn more here and follow us. The hazardous weather test bed is located at the National Weather Center in Norman, Oklahoma. It is used for experiments that will allow forecasters to learn and apply new technologies. The hazardous weather test bed is a really unique space throughout all of NOAA. And this is where the researchers and the operational folks come together in a common space to solve operational problems and to test new research tools that the research community is working on. The goal is to accelerate the transfer from research to operations of the newest tools and techniques. People come from around the world to collaborate on this unique project. We can bring together not only NOAA people, but also university people, faculty, uh, researchers, uh, private sector meteorologists, folks working in other countries in meteorology, forecasters can all come together 
and focus on what the problem of the day is with the forecasters. Each spring, several experiments occur in the hazardous weather test bed. Learn more here and follow us. What are you looking at? And what are you ignoring? Did you notice the NOAA logo in the corner? Forecasters have a lot of information in front of them too. Every second counts during severe weather and decisions about where to focus are constantly being made. This could be even more challenging in the future. Face Array Radar will produce four to six times more information than what we have now, which brings us to the question researchers are hoping to answer. Will more radar information affect forecasters' decisions? From our past experiments, we've learned a lot about how forecasters think uh, during the warning decision process, but we've also learned that those thought processes are very complex, and for that reason, we need a better way to be able to track forecasters' cognitive activity. Inbounds and possibly golf ball size tails. And eye tracker is a piece of technology that is used to determine in real time where someone's eye gaze is located. And these eye trackers are typically video based, which means a camera sits below a computer monitor and with infrared light and vector analysis, we can determine where a person is looking and how their eyes are moving. Eye tracking is already being used in the medical field and air traffic control. Using similar research methods, NSSL is discovering the benefit for weather forecasting too. Phased Array Radar will give forecasters a lot more to think about. Understanding their decision-making process will help researchers develop even more user-friendly tools. So what's the benefit for you? Even better weather warnings. To learn more, check us out online and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Uh, looking at today's sea ice analysis, uh, biggest change occurred here along the, well, from Point Barrow down to Point Franklin. It's uh, pulled offshore a fair distance, uh, hard to tell on this scale of the map. And then out to the west here, it looks like um, it will be advancing north, northwest, uh, gradually over the next several days with some light southerly winds. And for the southeast coast, forecast looking like this, northwest 20 knots along the outer coastline, sees it about uh, 5 to 6 feet, lighter out of the west for the north coast at 15 knots. South 15 for northern Lynn Canal, light westerly Stevens Passage, and barely a breeze there in Clarence Strait out of the northwest. And not much change for Sunday, light northwest breezes here over the inside waters, central and southern areas south Lynn Canal, all at 10 knots, sees 2 feet or less. Northwest 20 on the south coast with five foot seas and west northwest 15 for the north coast and seas running four to five feet. Prince William Sound, light westerly winds, 10 knots with two foot seas. And uh, North Gulf Coast here, westerlies, light with high pressure, 10 to maybe 15 knots with four foot seas, light southerlies for the Barren Islands, east 15, Kamishak Bay, and for Cook Inlet, west winds or variable to west at 10 with seas pretty slight. And then for the uh, Sunday outlook, not much change except swing it around to the east at 10 here for Cook Inlet, one to two foot seas. Uh, bigger increase though down across Kamishak Bay with uh, small craft advisories in the forecast for winds east of 25, southeast 20 for the Barren Islands, south 15 for the western North Gulf Coast, up toward Middleton Island, more easterly, only at about 10 knots and light southerly winds for Prince William Sound. Kodiak Island, uh, east-southeast, 15 to 20 knots with seas as high as 6 feet. Small craft advisories for Bristol Bay for east winds of 25 knots and the Bering Sea side of the peninsula east of 20. And uh, south side though, here up to uh, Castle Cape from Cape Sarachev, southeast at 15. And then small craft advisories, Cape Sarachev to Sitkanak for 25 knot winds. And then those uh, subside down to 15 knots for the day on Sunday with seas coming down a little bit to 6 feet. Southeast, 10 to 15 across the Alaska Peninsula. East 20 for Bristol Bay as well as Shelikoff Strait. Southeast 20 there for the eastern zones of Kodiak Island. Fox Islands tomorrow, mostly southeast at 15, becoming lighter and more variable, but then turning westerly at 10 knots. Real light winds here 
uh, for the central Aleutians, three to six foot seas and southwest begin to pick up a little bit out towards Chumianat too, up to 20 knots. And then for Sunday, west southwest, 15 to 20 knots here for the areas west of ADAC, light winds out of the west, a little bit more than what you'll see tomorrow, but still only 15 knots with four to six foot seas. And westerlies at 10 to 15 extend all the way over to Unalaska Island. Southwest coast tomorrow, small craft advisories south of Nunavak Island for southeasterlies at 25, 20 knot winds north of the island right up to St. Saint Saint Lawrence Island and 10 knots for Norton Sound. Southeast 15 for the Pribilofs, maybe 20 knots for St. Matthew Island. And for, let's bounce back or forward in time here, northwest 10, St. Matthew Island to the Pribilofs, southeast 15 to 20 on the southwest coast, southeast 15, St. Lawrence Island and staying light in Norton Sound. Here for the uh, western Arctic coast, uh, western central, southwest at 20 knots tomorrow, the trough off to the northwest. Southerly at about 20 knots there from uh, Cape Thompson northward and then southeast 15 for the Chukchi Sea and 15 knot winds in the eastern coastline. That holds through Sunday, uh, south to southwest at 15 knots for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, 20 knots out of the southwest uh, for the central coast. And then the west side, we've got small craft advisories. Again, a trough back to the northwest there. Uh, will tend to kick the winds up a little bit as it tries to approach. So 25 knot winds there with six foot seas and then from Cape Beaufort to the Bering Strait, southerlies at 20 with four to five foot seas. For tonight, again, we've got a weak trough up there now, but uh, not really producing any wind, but some moisture and low clouds, fog, drizzle type of conditions, becoming a little more showery as you head in toward the central north slope, ending farther to the east. Fair over the interior tonight, weakening front keeps a chance of moisture Eastern Aleutians to the Pribilofs and low clouds, fog, drizzle IFR for the Bering Sea. Same pattern here for the Gulf of Alaska up to the southeast coast. Tomorrow, after the low clouds burn off, be a very nice day. Kenai Peninsula, Prince William Sound, Susitna Valley, into, well into the 70s, Susitna Valley, maybe 80 for Big Lake, lower 80s, possibly mid 80s for the interior, both tomorrow and Sunday, with decreasing clouds up over the north central interior. Sunny for the southeast coast and quite warm. Thank you for joining us. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.